Hey you. Yeah you. You most likely clicked on this after seeing my first video, which may or may not be out yet, on me doing a spizzle lock, but that series is pretty lengthy and I didn't want to waste the breath there trying to explain all the rules, so in this quick video I'm going to explain what a spizzle lock is and the rule set of it. But first, a little backstory. I created this run because, to be quite honest, I'm getting sick of vanilla Pokemon games. I've played very few ROMs and I've never actually completed one start to finish, so I've only ever beaten mainstream Pokemon games growing up. I had a lot of fun doing it and then I discovered Nuzlocking and I fell in love with it. Long story short, in a million runs later, I like to consider myself pretty good, but I grew a bit tired of those too, and so I thought to myself, how can I make an interesting way to Nuzlocke vanilla Pokemon games while keeping them interesting? And then it came to me. The Spizzle Lock. Here are the rules. Rule 1. One healing item per important battle. This means for gym fights and elite 4 members and champion fights, you are allowed one healing item per battle. But, you must specify what the item is before entering the battle, and that will be the only item you are permitted to use. Rule 2. Standard Nuzlocke rules. You catch one per area, you name it, if it faints it's dead, cool, moving on. Rule number three, generation lock rules. A big part of how a spizzle lock is played is it's a variation of a generation lock, which if you don't know what that is, it's typically played like this. You'd start in a Kanto game like Fire Red or Blue, and then when you beat the game, you would take the surviving members of your team, scale them down to level five, slap Junior or another title to their name, and bring them with you into a Johto game like Heart Gold or Crystal. You would then do this for every generation, and you have to play it through one game of every generation without wiping once. Sounds tough, right? Well, in the Spizzle Lock you do that, but for every game. That's right, Rule 3 is Generation Lock rules, but you have to play through every main series game. Meaning I have to play through Red, Blue, and Yellow before I can even move on to Silver. I also have to play the game's remakes as well. Games I do not have to play are ones such as Legends Arceus and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, as they aren't mainstream Pokemon games. Rule number 4. No repeat Pokemon. This is arguably the most crucial and difficult rule in the rule set, but what does it even mean? Well, it means if I use a Pidgey to battle that I caught in Route 1 in Red, it is the only Pidgey I will ever get. Meaning I either bring it into the next game with me by having it survive the Elite Four and Champion, or it dies, or I simply put it in the box and I can never catch another Pidgey. This makes the run much more difficult, because not only do I have limited encounters under a Nuzlocke rule set, I have to be extremely careful about what Pokemon I use and win, especially when I have to play through a multitude of games that have extremely similar Pokedexes, and are even practically identical games, adding an entirely new and complex layer of strategy to the overall run. However, there are some important nuances to note in this rule set to ensure there's no confusion or accusations of cheating. If I were to, say, catch a Pokemon like Jinx in Gen 1 before it gets an evolution and it dies before it reaches Gen 2, I can still use Smoochum, it's pre-evolution, as I only get one line of each Pokemon per run, but Smoochum did not exist at the time, so although I can never evolve Smoochum, which makes it practically useless, I can still use it. This can also be seen mainly as a hindrance, as Dupes Clause only activates if I have used the Pokemon in any previous leg, which by the way constitutes if I have used it in battle, meaning I could miss out on a really good Pokemon because I have to catch Smoochum. Another small rule applies to split evolution Pokemon. Let's say I get a Ralts and I turn it into a Gardevoir, which then dies. Can I catch another Ralts to get a Glade? Well, yes and no. Technically, Ralts would fall under Dupes Clause if I ever encountered another one, but in Dupes Clause, there is nothing requiring me from trying again, so it's more of an option. So I can catch the Ralts, but I certainly cannot use it in battle. However, if I were to do something like, oh, I don't know, use the daycare to farm levels before using a Dawnstone to evolve it into a Gallade, it would be totally okay to do, especially since I wouldn't have used it in battle. However, if I were to catch a Pokemon like Pidgey and it dies before it turns into a Pidgeotto, that does not mean I am allowed to catch any Pidgeotto I find, as that Pidgey was the only one of its line I get for the entire run. This ensures I don't purposefully catch Pokemon like Magikarp or Zubat, which evolve into incredibly powerful Pokemon later on, and purposefully kill them if they don't have an ideal nature, and then capture their evolved form at a later stage of the run. Rule number 5, Trade Evolutions and Impossible Evolutions are on. That just means I can do stuff like evolve my Scyther into a Scizor without trading, and I can evolve my Pikachu into a Raichu in Pokemon Yellow. I just do this to ensure we have access to as many Pokemon as possible, because let's face it, it's rare we ever see these Pokemon in Nuzlocks, and it's a fun sight to see to have them get some screen time. And finally, Rule 6. The most important rule of them all. Like Rule 5, it involves Universal Pokemon Randomizer, or a similar tool. You must. And I mean you MUST! Randomize the Pokemon Catch tutorial in every leg, as that is the only way to truly verify that this was a legit 
and fair Spizzalock. And that's about it. I did leave a few components of this series open-ended on purpose, such as no specification between switch or set mode, as well as whether level caps are in place and stuff like that, because another important component of the Spizzalock is to have fun, and I don't find it particularly fun when you're boxed in to play Pokemon any one type of way. However, although I started playing on switch mode, after playing through Pokemon Red and entering Generation 2 of Pokemon, I have decided to start playing on set mode to up the difficulty, and after Pokemon Yellow I've started to use level caps in order to not over level for the fights. Well now that you know the rules for the Spizzle Lock, you can go and try for yourself, no flashy outro this time, so all I gotta say is please subscribe to my channel, I would really love any kind of support I can get, and if you're interested in seeing this rule set be played out in front of your very eyes, go check out my playlist on my channel for the Spizzle Lock, it's a commitment and the episodes are kinda lengthy, but I do try and jam pack it with entertaining moments and my own twists to make it like no other Pokemon series you've ever seen before. Anyways, uh, that's all for now, see ya!